Welcome to Libraries Today. This program is intended to recognize and highlight the unexpected ways local libraries serve their communities today. I'm your host, Stan Howe. When you go to the library, most of us immediately start looking for the book or video we want, or we find a handy computer and get online. We don't worry about what it takes to make sure all of those books, DVDs, and PCs are available and in working order. We take it for granted. But there's a lot of work, mostly behind the scenes, that goes into preparing a modern public library for the visits from patrons each and every day. Who files and shelves the books? What's it like to work behind the circulation desk? What goes into the preparation for a summer reading program or story hour? Let's pay a visit to a library and take a peek behind the bookshelf and find out what it takes to get a library up and running every day. A day in the life of a library, in this case, the Greenbrier County Public Library. We're here in Lewisburg, West Virginia, the home of the Greenbrier County Public Library. And with me now is the director of the library, Ann Farr. Ann, thank you, Stan. Well, thanks thank for being with much. us. Uh -huh. thank so you. We're, we are here today to kind of to find out what a typical day in the life of a library is like. Okay. But to get things started, why don't you give me a tour of, of this library? Okay. okay, okay. If we step right this way, we will move down into the stacks, which we have our print material. We have a public use bulletin board. We have all of this wing is um, principally nonfiction, aside mm -hmm. from the young adult area. And we interfile all of the um, adult nonfiction with the juvenile nonfiction. Here on this, to the right here on this wall, we have um, an ongoing art exhibit that changes every month. The local art group changes it every month. It's rotating. We have done it with them for probably the last 30 years, and it's a great addition for the community, and they manage it all for us. It's above our collection of DVDs, mm -hmm. and as we move on, we have the assistant director's office, and she is busy cleaning up after story hour. And, and we'll be and, talking to her a yes, little bit later. Yes, that's right. Downstairs. And in this area, we have the young adult area. We have a young adult reading area, and their print collection is here. We were told that when we built the new building that we needed to move the young adults out of the juvenile area. So that is exactly what we did, and it's well used, and it also is close to the assistant mm -hmm. director's office by design. And <laughs> <laughs> and as we move on, we have quiet areas in each corner of the library for the public. And we just missed, a, we had a um, computer class for in this area that the library offers one-hour segments of computer classes one-on-one -on -one, rather than a group setting. It seems to work better. But we have them in the corners or in the conference room, which we will come to soon. We have a paperback exchange. We have an older collection of um, programming videos. We have graphic novels, and we have National Geographic. We have National Geographic. Doesn't Every, everybody? <laughs> everybody loves National Geographic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. National true. Geographic and, and blue, blue books. books. Mm -hmm. Yes, and on the right we have the director's office. And mm -hmm. as we come into this area, we also have um, a small reference collection mm -hmm. on the right. On the left, we have our periodicals. On the table, a jigsaw we, puzzle. Yes, we have a community jigsaw puzzle, and we keep one going for them year round. And many, many people come into the area, use the computers, and then work on the jigsaw puzzle while they're here. It's yep. a great, it's a great community. Yeah, as, as we go, as we go through the library, one of the things I know, one, it's a, it's a gorgeous library, Thank and you. it's not very old. No, no, we, had, we are in our 10th year in this library, and we have enjoyed it. We went from a 2,500-square-foot building to a 13,000-square-foot um, building. So we moved into this area, and we're pleasantly surprised we enjoyed it. But as we move on, on the right, we have a conference room, the Daywood Conference Room, and it is a beautiful room. It seats nine people. It's designed for board meetings and very small groups. Um, it can be booked. It's free of charge. And then we move on in this area into the hardback adult fiction, which is our 
biggest, largest circulating part of the library. And following this, we have a collection of um, books on CD. And then we will go right into the juvenile section, the children's section of the library. And it is a very well used library. And then we will come over to, they have a small seating area. The children have their own computers. There's a small study bench for children. As we move around, we come back into the center of the library. And we have a collection of soapstone books from larger donors, but I really wanted to bring it what's, around. Uh, what's this room right over here? This room is a local history room and it houses local family histories and genealogy selections. And it is considered, it's called the closed case area. A bust of George is, Washington. Yes, a bust of George Washington. He has been with this library probably since the 1940s. Wow. He has been, he has been a figure in our library forever. Well, this is great. Yes. This is, uh, uh, thank you for the tour. Yes. Yep. Uh, one of the things we want to talk about, and maybe we can move over here to the computer yep. section. Uh, this is really the hub of the library. This is the reading area mm -hmm. and the public access computing. And it really is the, the very hub of the library around the circulation desk. So, Anne, describe for me a typical day as you start things out. When you come in, how, how do things get going? I get here an hour before everyone else, and I bring all the computers up. I bring all the CERT computers up. I straighten everything up to get ready for the public because they are typically here at 9 o'clock, and they definitely want in the door at 9 o'clock. So we want it to look good, and we make certain that everything is straightened and all the books are shelved. The front, they've, they've shelved them the night before. You know, what I think one thing a lot of people have this idea that libraries are just buildings filled with books. Right. And... Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's, it's, it's much more than that. Uh, right. What do you see as the library's role in the community? In the community? I see it as a gathering place. I see it as a place of collective information for local information. I see it as a gateway for people as far as information with the public access computers because, believe it or not, I, many people in this area and any other area don't have home computers. They don't have internet connection. They don't have good connectivity, which we have good connectivity here. And they don't have that that we can offer. We offer business services. As far as if you came in and want to pack up a box, we'll give you the tape and the stapler and <laughs> everything. But no, I think the role of the community is it's a, commu it's a, it's a community center of, of type, of such. How many employees does it take to get a library like this up and running every day? We have seven employees. We have three full-time, four part-time, and we could definitely use more <laughs> at times. There are times that we are so busy that we can't, we can't keep the, the public served. Of course, a lot of that comes down to funding. And it does. as library director, one of the things you have to deal with, maybe one of the more mundane things you have to deal with, is, is funding and, and where does that come from and how do you get more of it? We receive tax-based funding from the state of West Virginia, from the county commission, from the Board of Education, and from the city of Lewisburg. The city of Lewisburg is very generous to this library. It is actually a city library. And they cover all of our utilities. And we always joke that we're kept people in this building. <laughs> but aside from that, that's approximately 50% of our um, support, but 50% of our support in this community is private. We raise 50% of our operating budget um, through private sources, and the Board of Trustees need to be credited for making those contacts and keeping those donations, because we do it annually, and it's, it's, it's a struggle. <laughs> you know, a lot of your work as, as the director is, is behind-the-scenes stuff, right. um, ordering books, right. handling paper, uh, paperwork, uh, right. Scheduling employee yeah. hours, kind of the dull stuff. Yeah. The administrative yeah. tasks, yes. But, but very important stuff. Yeah, yes, yes. I do feel like what I do is principally behind the scenes. I'm not, I'm not the front desk person that the public walks in and says, oh, there's the librarian. <laughs> <laughs> and the librarian is anyone behind the desk. Mm -hmm. So, but no, I do, I do more behind the scenes in processing payroll 
and and collection development. Collection development is a is a big issue. I feel like it's one of the most important things that I do that I do in the library. Tell me about the end of the day. So the end of the day, uh, the of the uh, day. what what do you do you have to shoo people out and? Okay, we are open until nine o'clock Tuesday through Thursday, and. I do not work until 9 o'clock, but I do know that they have people on the public access computer and checking out books typically until 9 o'clock. And we do, the public access computers are disabled at 15 till so that we do have that 15 minutes because you do have people that want to, that would like to stay on. Amazing is that any morning that you open here, 9 o'clock in the morning, people are right at the door. We don't open till one on Monday, and they typically have a crowd outside the door waiting to get in. One and the, it's really a good feeling. Well, one of the good things I noticed when we drove drove in that the parking lot was full, right. and for any library, that's a great sign. Right. That's we have been we've been very pleased. This building has caused great public response to to have moved in, and within two years after moving in here, our print circulation, our annual transaction circulation, had doubled. That's amazing. Um, yes. We were in a smaller building on Route 60, not too far from here, and our print circulation when we moved in here doubled. That's a great sign. Yes. Yeah. Well, well Anne, thanks for the tour, mm -hmm. and thanks Thank for you. giving us some insight of what you do. Right, right. When we come back, we're going to take a little harder look at the inner workings of a West Virginia public library. Stick with us. We'll be right back. Welcome to Understood.org, a free online resource for parents of kids with learning and attention issues. With personalized recommendations, tools, and daily access to experts to help your child thrive. Understood.org, because understanding is everything. Back here at the Greenbrier County Public Library at the Circulation Desk. And with us now is Samantha Hale. Sam, thanks for joining with us. Thank you. We appreciate it. So, We've been talking about the inner workings of a library. And one of the things I kind of wanted to see from you, you're the most visible person in the library, right? People come in, they're going to see you right off the bat. Uh, so tell me about your job. What does it entail? My primary responsibility is providing patron services, especially in circulation. So any materials they need access to, um, both in print and online, or any other services like sending faxes, making copies, that sort of thing, that's, that's who they come to. So that's my primary responsibility. So, so you and everybody else who's at the circulation desk, yes. you guys really are the face of the library in many ways. Yes. Mm -hmm. When people call, they usually get one of us. So we're kind of their first contact. So the face and the voice of the library. <laughs> yes. Right. Okay. Um, so library offers a wide range of services. Uh, tell me about what they are. Well, we provide, um, we provide a wide variety of services. Mostly, you know, it's going to be accessing materials in print and online. You know, we have our library materials on the shelves. Mm -hmm. We also have online materials. One of our more popular resources is our OverDrive resources, um, the online ebooks and audiobooks that our patrons can access. We also do have databases that um, people can use to look for information, primarily research, you know, for our students in the community. We also provide, you know, kind of the, the clerical kinds of services. Um, you know, prints, copies, faxes, that sort of thing. If people have questions occasionally about local services, we can help direct them um, and that sort of, those sort of services. Right. Yes. Now, this library is also connected to other libraries in the area, right? So, yes. So somebody can utilize this library and maybe another library nearby. Yes, and that actually happens quite a lot here. Um, this library is connected to, via the Mountain Library Network, so their card actually works here and at any other library in that network. And actually, we do co cooperate with these libraries often, especially through interlibrary loan. If a patron wants a book that we don't actually have in our stacks here, they can fill out an interlibrary loan request and we can get it from one of our cooperating libraries. Almost everything that you guys provide requires a card. Yes, it A does. library card. So, yes. I'm a new person moving to Lewisburg. I need a library card. How does that process work? Well, we'd want you to have some form of ID with you, and preferably something with your current address. Even if you've just moved, if you have a piece of mail or something, mm -hmm. um, so we can get a current address from you. That way we know how to get in contact with you. And then what we would have you do is actually fill out an application for a library card. 
and you would fill this out for us. And you can see it just asks for your basic contact information so that we can actually create an account for you in our system. So as you fill that out, usually what I like to tell patrons is if you want to go ahead and browse while, um, while after you've filled that out while I'm entering the information in the system, then, um, then we'll put you in the system. How long a process is it? It depends. I mean, it doesn't take terribly long. I don't know, five or ten minutes. And you can see we would bring up a new patron entry form and we would fill that into our system. And it has a variety of fields that kind of mm -hmm. help us know what county you're in and um, what your address is, sort of the basics. Mm -hmm. Yes. So we would do that. Okay, and we would actually give you a card at this point. Mm -hmm. So we keep our supplies down here. We would scan your barcode number for your library card. If you had an email address, we do make this optional for our patrons because we can send emails when holds are available and that sort of thing, um, or courtesy notices. Okay, so once we have you entered in the system, we would actually be able to give you your card. We would have you sign it, um, and then that would be yours to keep. Okay. This would let you access any of the resources, print and online, in our system. Now, if you wanted to start using the, um, if you wanted to start using OverDrive, we would assign you a PIN number that you could then go ahead and change once you get into the account online. So, so once I get my card, how? So I have it. So I have my card. Yes. Uh, so then, what do I do if I want to check out a book? Do I show it to you? How do I utilize it? You usually this? hand the card to me, okay. and then I scan it, and then I take the items you want to check out. I scan those. Mm -hmm. um, I stamp them with the due date. I usually like to tell patrons when the due date is, too, just in case. Um, and then they're yours for the time that you have them to check out. Okay. Yes. So, so, obviously, library card, critical to everything you guys do, and it's yes. important for patrons to have one. Yes, it is. So. And the great thing is it's free, it's something everybody can have, and there's no age limit. Um, you could be a little baby and have a library card. My 20-month-old has one. That's so. great. <laughs> and I can also use this as some of the other libraries You can use well. this at any Mountain Library Network library. Okay. Um, so tell me about some of the other services you provide. So you know, obviously you come to the library to check out books. Yes. You can get on the internet. Yes. Uh, you can check out DVDs. Yes. What other things do you provide the public? Um, we do also provide programs for our public. Um, story Hour, we have different special programs throughout the year um, that are available to our patrons of all ages. Um, and I mentioned earlier, we do have interlibrary loans, so that's another way to access materials. Okay, so a wide range of services. Yes. Uh, so, I've got my new card, I've checked out a book, now I'm bringing a book back. Okay. So. One of the important things, one of the things I don't realize, I, I, I realize that most people don't know, how does all this stuff get back on the shelf? So I, I'm returned a book after I've checked it out and enjoyed reading it. Uh, what do you do with it at that point? Where does it go? We usually take the book, we scan it, um, and then we usually put it back on one of these mm -hmm. book carts over here, um, and then we go put it back in the collection. Um, if for some reason a patron wanted to renew the book, which happens a lot, um, we can actually go ahead and renew it for them at that time. We take their library card, we renew the book, and then they can have it for an additional two weeks. Okay. You know, from the outside looking in, it seems a little complicated. Uh, is it? Not really. I mean, there's a learning curve at any library, um, but really it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty basic. Um, and it's all just about getting the, the, the items to the users. So. Well, Sam, we appreciate you taking the time and kind of showing us how things tick here at the library. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll be right back in just a moment. Every child is curious. George, look what I found. Turn their curiosity into a lifelong love of learning. Create a curious reader. This is super bedtime reading. Share a book together today. Visit read.gov. Welcome back to Libraries Today. Besides the everyday workings of a library, libraries provide the community with a lot of special programming, like story hours or arts and crafts programs. The kids and parents arrive on time and things are already in place and ready to go. But a lot of effort has already gone into making these programs ready for the public. Here at the Greenbrier Public Library, Story Hour with dozens of kids is a perfect example of one of these special programs and assistant director Christy Carver is the one who makes the magic happen. Christy, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me today. So tell me, how does a program like this, how do you get it up and running? Um, 
we we've unfortunately fortunately had a great background. The, the program's been in place for several years, and it really keeps going by word of mouth. We have repeat um, parents that bring children as they as they have more children they come back um, we start with planning you find books that you love and you want to share those those books with the children you come up with craft ideas or art ideas to go with that um, and plan a whole theme around it and then do a weekly activity you make it weekly so that the parents can expect that you're going to be there every week so every Thursday they know to come see us at the library well, I know it's more than a one-person show so uh, how many people take part in making this happen um, we are fortunate here. We're, we're well-staffed. So in our three- to five-year-old program, it's myself, and then our library aide, Joyce LaRue, helps me out. And we have five to 12 children weekly. Then we have a two-year-old program, and we have Becky Tipton, one of the other library aides, who does that program for us. We try to do the same kind of program with each one, but we make it shorter for the two-year-old's attention spans. So we make it a, a half-an-hour program, seven-hour. So if it's a weekly program, how much time do you devote each week in preparation for it? Um, well, we start out by monthly planning a calendar to give the parents and deciding the themes. And then every week, it probably takes three to five hours of choosing the activities in the books, um, copying and getting the crafts ready, and then actually cutting them for the children and getting them ready for them to just sit down and, and put them together. Do you do any advertising, a traditional advertising? Is it just word of mouth? Mostly word of mouth, but we also have it on our website, and we list special activities on our Facebook page. Um, but word of mouth is the best thing we do in this area. We have a, a, a growing population with the students at our West Virginia School of Osteopathic Medicine, and so lots of their spouses bring their children, and that word of mouth keeps it growing. But you do a lot more than other programs besides this one. Give me some examples of some of your other programs. Um, we just finished up this week two Pinterest parties. We had a Pinterest party for adults on Tuesday night. For They came and brought a Pinterest dish and made a craft. We also had a children's Pinterest party yesterday where they decorated Chris, Christmas scenes on books. Uh, we have a Crazy Eights math club that are eight weeks at a time for K2 or three, five, third to fifth grade. Um, we've had three seasons of that. We're getting ready for a fourth season in the spring. The children really love that. Every It's once a week. Let's see, those are the main things we do. So it's not just kids programming, but you've got programs for adults as well. Yes, we do. We have a book club that Becky Tipton runs uh, once a month. We have the Pinterest parties monthly now. We are doing an origami party today for teens and um, adults. So we're starting to branch out and do more adult programming. Now this program seems pretty popular. Uh, well, what would you say is, is your most popular program and why do you think that is? I would say it is the Story Hour program because it's weekly. It gives the children a chance to not only learn about books and literature and, and understand the importance of reading, they learn about the library, but the parents like this idea of giving them a chance to socialize and be with other children. And I think the parents enjoy socializing as much as the children do. Explain the process for parents and kids who are interested in a program like this. Uh, what's the process entail? What do they have to do to take part? Um, in our library, you can call ahead and find out the schedules and the dates, and then when you come to our library, we have you sign up and register that day. It's not a set in stone, you know, don't have to come every week, it's drop in. We, we never know from one week to the next how many we're going to get or which children will attend. I'm sure other libraries are similar, that you just need to call and find out when their programs are and, and what ages and times. So when you look at these programs that you've been running now for a few years, and there are a bunch of them, uh, what... What is your goal? What are you trying to accomplish with these programs? I think keep creating the next generation of readers to create a love of libraries, um, to give them early literacy skills so that when they get to, ch to school they're, they're prepared, more prepared. Um, I'm also in Read Aloud West Virginia and I know those words that these children hear are so important when they get to school. It's the toolbox that gives them all the information and words they would never maybe hear or say at home or sometimes in these books. And so introducing them to, to the literature and literacy and all that. How important, in the overall scheme of things for this library, how important would you say that these special programs are? I think it's very important. I think it, it keeps reminding the parents of the importance of libraries and that we are still 
important in a modern world that that we're not just all ebooks and and e audiobooks that we we have a role for that and we do provide those but we also have a role to to in, introduce words and picture books to the children and keep them going and i think that will give us the next generation hopefully of those who help fund the libraries in the future before i let you go uh, describe for me if you could uh, you know, several people who take part in making these programs do you guys what's the process in sitting down and uh, each week, do you sit down and go over what, what we have coming up? We need to do this and that. Uh, describe that process for me. Um, we, we first pick a theme. Like I said, we, we choose a theme. And this year we've done something a little different. We've, we tried to keep the parents reading to the children, make this about books. And so we've gone with Pete the Cat all season long since September. Every week we've almost had a Pete the Cat book. And our wall in the story hour room has all the shoes on it showing how many books they've read to their children. And so with that, we've gone with Pete the Cat themes. And once we sit down, Becky and I um, choose, out, choose crafts, and then we figure out how to work with both groups, modify it. Then we spend the time copying it and figuring out, making a pattern or sample. And then we go from there and copy it, cut it. It takes, you know, three to five hours at least of staff time to get it all prepared um, weekly to get ready for this. And in all those plans, I guess the ultimate goal is when the parents and kids arrive that everything's in place and everything is ready to rock and roll. Yes, yes. So you, I, I set them down after I read to them. And we read stories first and maybe do a song or two. Once they're at the tables, we hand out the crafts. They're ready to go. Um, I think you'll see some pictures of them coloring and gluing. And then, then they're having a snack and on their way to, to the rest of their day. And I think... Hopefully they're learning from the process, not just having a product at the end. We're hoping that the process is just as important. So based on your experience through all of this, what do you think the future holds for libraries and kids and parents? Hopefully these are creating traditions for these children to repeat when they become parents. That wherever they are, because a lot of them will not be in our area, they will be moving, they are still taking their children one day to a library. They're remembering the little things we've done. Maybe a song we sang or a toy we played with or a game we did at the end. And that they will remember libraries fondly and then that they will remember us in the future. Christy, thanks for spending some time with us and uh, we appreciate it. Thank you very much. As you can see, there's a lot that goes into making a library ready for the public every day. The work that happens behind the scenes is what determines how successful a library and its patrons will be. I'd like to thank our guests, Library Director Ann Farr, Assistant Director Christy Carver, and Library aides Becky Tipton, Donna Kellison, and Sam Hale for giving us a guided tour of the Greenbrier County Public Library and providing us a peek inside the everyday workings of a modern West Virginia public library. The West Virginia Library Commission encourages lifelong learning, individual empowerment, civic engagement, and an enriched quality of life by enhancing library and information services for all West Virginians. For questions or comments regarding topics on this show, please do not hesitate to call us at 1-800-642-9021 or visit us online at www.librarycommission.wv.gov. To keep you updated on library happenings in the state and beyond, the West Virginia Library Commission uses the WVLC website, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube channel, and the Library Lookout newsletter. If you haven't liked us or followed us on social media yet, please do. People think I'm trash, but they're wrong. Today I'm just an aluminum can, but one day I could be a stadium. I'm your host, Stan Howe. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Libraries Today.